morning. My name is Gary Pretty. I'm the pastor here at Your Rock Hall Church. And I just want to thank you for joining us online today for worship. While you're here, you're getting settled in, I invite you to be here on the right-hand side of the screen. On my left, you're right. Uh, there's a connection card. I invite you to fill that in. If you have any prayer requests, if you could share those, I'd love to follow up with you by email just to say thank you for worshiping with us and how we can pray for you. Uh, also over there, there's a Bible app that you can use during the message. There's my notes with some announcements that are there, ways you can follow up. Uh, also, I, I tell you that there's a chat screen over there uh, that you have to sign in with a, a screen name, a way that we can kind of have a conversation during our worship today, where I'm going to be asking you some questions, and, and there's some hosts that are in the room that they're going to be asking you some questions and just trying to engage each other to make this as much of a community as we can, all right? Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Praise God for that. I really do. I'm really looking forward to what God is going to do today because he's got something special in store for you and for me, all right? So God bless you. I ask you to make some room so you can join us in, to sing and worship and we praise God together. Remember that everybody's welcome because nobody's perfect. And when we're all together, that God can do anything. Amen? God bless you. Welcome to church. Good morning, church. I hope this message finds you well and having a blessed day. Would you bow your head with me today and pray to the Lord? Lord, first and foremost, thank you for everything that you give to us. Thank you for opening our eyes this morning and granting us this day. Thank you, Lord, for being with us in these troubling times where families are stressed out and people are in crisis and a disease is running rampant through the country and through the world. We need you now more than ever, Lord. We need your love and your comfort and your mercy and your grace. We need your guidance, Lord. We still need you, as we always do, to be with us, to let us know that you're there with us, that you'll never give up on us, and that we'll get through this together with you, Lord. Help us to reach out to others however and whenever we can, even through the physical limitations being placed upon us. And help us to continue to be the body of Christ to the world, to our community, to each other, to whoever you lead us to, Lord. Help us be Christians. We ask this in your name, in your son's precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to read to you today a poem that's going to fit in with the sermon that Pastor Gary is going to give today. I hope that you enjoy these words. I wrote them some time ago um, for some folks that were struggling. It's about not living in yesterday, but moving forward today. Yesterday is beyond us now, like the setting of the sun. A new day is dawning. A new journey is begun. Perfect we are not. The Lord makes it so. We're to do the best we can, drawing from what we know. Each bridge that we cross surely helps us on our way. We cannot begin the trip if we're lost in yesterday. So don't look back, my friend. Only look ahead. Don't get lost in my might have been or what might have been said concentrate on where you go where you've never been one foot in front of the other and smile remembering when once you may have stopped momentarily along your way lost but briefly on the path in the fog of yesterday i hope you have a blessed day i love and miss you all Amen. Well, thank you, Mike, for, uh, for sharing your, your poetry with us. Uh, it is kind of the direction we're going today and today in the message for sure. And I believe in all our worship as, as the day after Easter, or the, the message after Easter, right? The week after uh, in our text today, it's actually probably a month later. Uh, but it's still the point is uh, yesterday is past and we're moving on. So uh, I thank you, Mike, for sharing that. I would ask you if you're here, logged in online, and uh, this is your first time, welcome to our church. Uh, we're in our we're in our own sanctuary here as we share 
uh, and encourage one another. And I ask you to, to log in next uh, on, my, on my left, your right. On the screen there is a connection card where you can register your attendance and, and ask questions and submit some prayer requests. Greatly appreciate it if you would do that. Also get registered for the chat that's going to be going on uh, during the message today. I have some questions for you, some ways for us to interact and, and try to build some community to connect with each other as we worship today. Uh, I, I, I praise God that you're here today. Uh, thank you that uh, you're, you're, you're seeking to stay connected, not just to your church community, but to God. Uh, I pray that this, uh, our worship today is, is beneficial to you. It's uplifting, it's encouraging, and more importantly, it's relevant to right where you are today in your life. All right, uh, let's pray and then we'll get started here in worship. God, I thank you. I thank you for, for who you are and what you've done. Lord, lead us today as we seek to worship you, as we seek to glorify you in our homes, in our cars, in our offices, in our, wherever we are, Lord, as we're gathered with family, with friends, just online with some others. Uh, Lord, we thank you for it all. We thank you for being at work in this, Lord. We love you and we praise you. Amen. earth that could give us anything nothing we might think we're full but we're not if we don't have you 
Lord, thank you, Jesus, for you are our everything. We are nothing without you. Lord, thank you for you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You came to rescue the lost, to heal the, the illness, the pain in the hearts of those who are suffering. Lord, you are here in the midst of this darkness. You are upon us, and we thank you and praise you, Lord. from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from the throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the father Praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, to reveal the kingdom coming, and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you still put this fire across. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. Praise the Father. The stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from the tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, and the Spirit lit the flame. Let the gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Thank you, Lord, for this great morning. Thanks for this time to come together and worship 
you. Thanks for the fellowship that we have, even though we're not all together. We are together in your spirit. Father, yeah. we just thank you uh, for, for that Holy Spirit that you just fill us to overflowing. And, and Father, we just ask that, uh, that as we praise you this morning, that you would humble us. And, uh, and so that everything that we think and do and say and play this morning, Father, will honor you and glorify you and, and, uh, and please you. And, and uh, Father, we just ask that, uh, that you also uh, give uh, Pastor Gary a, a special blessing on his message. And, and Father, just uh, we love you and, and we know that you love us so much more. And uh, we just ask everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. was full of your love, your love for us, God. We get an opportunity to, to live our lives in response. Lord, we praise you. We praise you today, God, as we, as we 
have moved through Easter, and yet we find ourselves not moving anywhere. Mm. As a nation, as a people, Lord, we feel like we're stuck right where we were a month ago. As a matter of fact, we are. We're right where we were, Lord. We haven't, we don't feel like we've made any progress, Lord. God, this this Easter season continues, Lord. We continue to ask for healing for, for our nation, physically, medically, emotionally, for sure, spiritually, Lord, for many of us need emotional healing as well. God, we're stressed, we're anxious. Lord, many need financial healing that uh, that they're not so sure about tomorrow, financially even. But God, in all this, we know that you're at work. In all this, we know that you're good and you promise never to leave us nor forsake us and that in all things, you're going to work them for the good of those who love you. God, we depend on that. We trust in that. And we praise you because of that today. We love you, Lord. We just thank you for a chance to gather together as a family across time and space and to spend a few moments in your presence. We ask you, Lord, as we consider your scriptures today, that you'd speak to us. Thank you, God. Amen. So I just wanted to prep you all for a moment. Uh, we have a special treat for today, the the Massey family is presenting our scripture reading today. So uh, let's hear it, Massey's. Let us see what you got. These things, Jesus manifested himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he manifested himself in this way. There were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two of the other disciples. Simon, Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will also come with you. They went out, and they got into the boat. And that night, they caught nothing. But when the day was now just breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus, therefore, said to them, Children, you do not have any fish, do you? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you will find a catch. They cast their their four, and they were not able to haul in it in because of the great number of fish. That disciple, that disciple, therefore, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, "It is the only, it is the Lord." And so, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put his outer garment on. For he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, but about 100 yards away, dragging the net full of fish. And so when they got out, got out upon the land, they saw a charcoal fire already laid and fish placed on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some fish, bring some of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty three. And although they, they, there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the, the disciples ventured to question him who are you knowing that it was the lord jesus came and took the bread and gave them and the fish likewise this is now the third time it's now the third time jesus was manifested to the disciples after he was raised from the dead so when they had finished breakfast. Jesus said to, said to Peter, Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you have, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said to him, 
tend, tend my lambs. He said to him again the second, a, a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, shepherd my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you, do you love me? Jesus, wait. Come. Lydia, stop. Maya. He said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. <clears throat> now this he said significantly, sig signifying, signifying about what kind of death he would glorify God. <clears throat> and when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who also had leaned back on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, therefore, seeing him, said to, said to Jesus, Lord, and what about this man? Jesus said to him, so, if I want him to Remain until until I can came. What is that to you? You follow me. To you, you follow me. This saying. Therefore, went among the brethren that the disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but only, if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who bears witness of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his witness is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, which, if they were written in detail, I suppose that even the world itself would not contain the books which were written. So thank you, Massey's. I appreciate y'all uh, reading that. That was a long passage, and, and you kids did a fantastic job. Uh, I want to invite others to take part in the worship services, whether it's reading texts or, or praying or, leading, or sharing your gifts or talents or your abilities like Mike did earlier. Uh, we want to get everybody involved in our worship on Sundays, just like we were before. Uh, we can do it in a different way with this, which uh, leads me to introduce to you uh, Debbie Bergen, who, leads our, who coordinates our prayer uh, prayer chain here for our charge. I invited her to, she would lead us in our pastoral prayer this morning. So Debbie, please. Good morning. My name is Debbie Bergen from Rock Hall Church. Before we go to prayer, I want to share a little bit with you about our Rock Hall prayer ministry. Um, if you have a prayer request or you know someone that's in need of prayer, you can send an email to pray at your rockhall.church. Those prayer requests are all listed on our online prayer list. Uh, we also have an ability, if you include in that email, that you would like this to be lifted as a, a public prayer request through our In Touch prayer chain, an email is sent out to that prayer chain group, uh, and it's a group of people that collectively keep those prayer requests listed in, lifted in prayer. If you would like to be included on that prayer chain, please include in your email that information that you would like your email address to be included in that prayer chain. Um, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father, we come before you this morning to worship, Lord, uh, not in our church buildings um, as we're accustomed to, Lord, but we are thankful for the technology that allows us to uh, gather together and worship in our individual homes and be able to share the worship and share the message and even be able to do some chatting and lifting of prayer requests through that um, chat sessions, Lord. And um, we are so thankful for this technology at this time where we're uh, being kept apart, Lord. Um, but we are together, one in heart, um, as a church body and one with you. And Father, we ask... Um, that you just be with with your people, Lord, that in this time of uncertainty, when we're, we're so unsure about so many things, Lord, that uh, remind us that the one thing that we can be sure of is that you are God and that you are in control. And I ask you to be with Pastor Gary and his family, Lord, keep them healthy, uh, keep them safe, and um, bless Gary, Pastor Gary as he um, work so hard through technology to keep us together and connected as a community. And, and I pray now that you would just um, be with him as he brings you the message, Lord. Let his words be those that you would speak to us, Father, and uh, open our hearts, open our ears so that we can hear what you have to say through his message. All these things, Father, we uh, ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, so we are here today, uh, the Sunday after Easter, and we're concluding the Gospel of John, at least uh, the text. We're going to go back. We have one more week. Uh, we're going to go back next week to the one, the chapter we skipped, chapter 17. But today we're in chapter 21 with a sermon that I've titled uh, "A New Life," a new life that that we are living, <clears throat> that that we get to live. In this, uh, in this Easter season. So I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you're able to take part in our worship. Uh, I really look forward to what God is going to do here this morning. As we begin, and I hope you're getting logged into the chat here on, on your right, my left, on the side of the screen here, a uh, way you can interact and kind of build community. There's a connection card there. Fill that out, please, and submit that. And then uh, log into the chat. And it'll be a way that you can uh, take part in the conversation here. Just as a way to, to kind of get things started, I would ask you that uh, if you would do, do me a favor and share your favorite movie series, uh, favorite series of movies, not a, just a single or not a TV show, but your favorite movie that's, you know, more than one. So I have a favorite. Mine is the Star Wars saga. Um, I prefer most of the older films, actually. Uh, the first and the second one are my two favorite movies, I think. Um, the, the, the A New Hope, the first one, which was number four, which is kind of strange the way they do it. And then um, Empire Strikes Back, which was the second one, which is number five. Um, those are two fantastic movies. They both ended with real cliffhangers. What is it? You know, you just you had to come back. You had to you had to wait two or three years, but you had to you were going to come back and see the next movie. The, the newer films, they learn something different, a new way to kind of keep us connected, keep us hooked, as it were. At the end of each film, after the credits had run, after the end of the movie was over, they would show these little previews of the next film, or not not of the next film, but they would show like a bridge from from the one the movie you just saw until the one that'll be coming out in two years. And so it was a way to kind of tease you, uh, to invite you back, to, to show you what was happening in the meantime. That's exactly what I believe is happening here in the Gospel of John. We, we talked about chapter 20 last week when we talked about the, in, on Easter Sunday. The resurrection happened in chapter 20, right? Where Jesus, he, he had died in chapter 19, he rose in chapter 20, and then he appeared. They, they didn't know where he was. They went to the tomb to find him. He wasn't there, Right? Then he appeared and he showed himself to the disciples and to Mary and all the others. And, and chapter 20, it ends with this, this powerful statement, this verses 30 and 31. They say this, Jesus performed many other signs in, his, in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. You see, it, it seems like in the in chapter in the, at the end of chapter twenty 
that, that John, the gospel writer, is landing the plane. Like everything's coming in, everything's fitting together. It's Jesus is alive. We all know it. Roll credits, right? It's like this is the, the end, the crescendo. The, the symbols are clashing. It's, it is the climax of the film. But that's not what the way it ends. John, the gospel writer, you see, he wanted to show us some more because he had left a main character in uh, his telling of the Jesus' story. He had left a main character out or on the outside, Peter. The last we saw of Peter, he was, he was isolated. He, was, he had denied Jesus, right? bold and confident Peter, the one who had, um, who had stood up at the Last Supper and said, Jesus, it doesn't matter what all these other disciples do, I'll never leave you, right? Peter, the one who had taken the sword to the garden, and when the soldiers appeared to arrest Jesus, he cut off the soldier's ear. The defender of Jesus, the bold and confident Peter, the one, the only one who got out of the boat to walk on water with Jesus, bold and confident. There he'd found himself at that fire in the courtyard of the, of the high priest, denying Jesus. He, he, well, we, the last time we saw him, bold and confident Peter had become a failure. Had become a failure. You ever messed up like that? I mean, a real blunder. Uh, maybe you didn't deny Jesus. Maybe you did. I don't know. Um, but, but we've all made mistakes, right? Some of us have made really big ones. You've done things that you weren't supposed to do, and in the middle of doing them, you thought, ah, I shouldn't be doing this, but you did it anyway, right? A real mistake. Maybe you find it in our current situation where we all find ourselves today. You're, you're unprepared, you know? You weren't ready for this. Your debts were out of control, and your job wasn't as reliable as you thought it was, and now, oh my goodness, I knew I should have done something, but I, I didn't have time, or I just... I just didn't do what I knew what I should, and or maybe your business isn't able to adapt the way you needed it to. You need it to now. A mistake, a failure, something we overlooked, something we should have, could have, if only we would have. I remember one time that I failed, much like Peter. I was a student pastor in a church, and while I was there, I was coaching high school football. I love the sport of football, and. Um, I wanted to get involved as a coach in order to show my faith, right, to the kids, to the other coaches, that you can do this. Uh, you can coach with a, with a, a disciple's mindset, right? So I was, that's what I was there for. Uh, I, I loved the sport. I, when I was in school, I had two coaches particularly that, that really come to mind. One uh, was a great encourager. I would have done anything for him. The other one, he didn't have a lot in his toolbox for, for me when it came to motivation. My experience of his motivating skills were around humiliation, uh, embarrassment, right? Um, just ridicule, criticism, shame. You know, that's that's all he had to motivate me. He didn't he didn't use anything else, and we didn't get along very well. And so so I became a coach because I didn't want kids to have a coach like that, like I had had. I wanted, I wanted them to know that there was somebody who was positive, who was encouraging to them. One day, I had a player that I couldn't, I just couldn't get through to. I couldn't get him to do what he needed to do, and, and I broke, and I messed up. I, I went into that toolbox, and I pulled out one of those bad tools, right? It didn't work any better with him than it had with me, and, and only I realized as I did it, that I had crossed the line. I had crossed the line, and I felt it. See, I got into coaching to, to encourage, not to break spirits, and I had failed that day as a coach, and I'd failed that day as a disciple, and frankly, I wanted to quit. I wanted to stop right then and there. I mean, I, I was thinking, much like Peter, I believe, how can God use me after I've messed up like this? As a coach, it was probably one of the lowest points of my life. Have you ever failed your faith like that? Where you didn't stand up for Jesus, maybe? Where you didn't say that, that you knew you should, and then it went south? I'm sure many of us have. Maybe you failed in some other significant way. And how did you feel when that happened? How did you feel? 
if you're bold enough, if you're brave enough, I'd invite you to share that. Just one word here on the screen as you, uh, as you can. You don't have to give circumstances, but the one word, the, the feeling that you felt when you messed up, when you failed. Well, that wasn't the end of the story for Peter, and that wasn't the end of the story for me, and it wasn't for you. He didn't end his life as a washout, as a failure. Not at all. Chapter 21 tells us what happened. It's that bridge from, from the big mistake into what Jesus had for him. That's where we're going to see in chapter 21. That's actually what we heard when Lydia started reading it. You know, Jesus was alive, but where did these disciples find themselves? They're back in Galilee. They're back in Galilee. They went home. They're, they're out fishing. Peter had gotten a group, and they've gone out fishing. They'd been out all night. They caught, they'd caught nothing. And as they're coming into shore, there's a man on the shoreline, and he's at a fire. And, and, you know, they don't know it's Jesus. We know it's Jesus as we're reading it. But the man on the shore calls out to them. says, hey, how did y'all do? <laughs> how did you do? That's, for anyone who's gone out and fished all night and not caught anything, that's a pretty insulting thing. I mean, the, the expression on their face is they're standing up, holding the sail, or as they're rowing in. I mean, that should say enough about how they did, right? But no. Jesus asked them, but Jesus knew how they did. So why was he asking a question where the answer was obvious? I believe Jesus, uh, Jesus knew that there's something about us having to hear ourselves say, you know, I'm just not the fisherman I thought I was, or I'm just not the disciple that I thought I was, or I'm not the coach that I thought I was. You know, because if we don't say it, if we don't, if we don't put a voice to it, if we don't and acknowledge what's really going on, we'll make up excuses. Well, you know, Andrew, he got bad bait, you know, or, or Nathaniel, you know, he brought that bunch of bananas on, the bo on board the boat. Who's going to catch fish with bananas? There's something silly like that. Or, or you blame the one that you hurt. Well, he deserved it. He had it coming. She should have known better. See, Jesus wants us to see our situation exactly for what it is, not, not to live in denial, because it's only when we deal in reality and what really is that he can begin to heal us, that we aren't the fishermen, we, that we aren't the disciples. That's when Jesus can begin to restore us, and that's what God wants to do. When we get honest, Jesus begins our restoration. When we get real, we were shut out, you know, we went out fishing and we just, we just don't have it anymore. That Jesus, went, that, that moment that when we, we didn't catch anything, that Jesus went on to tell them the fish are right there. So they cast their nets on the other side of the boat as Jesus told them. And, and in that moment, Peter realized who it was. And he exclaimed, it's the Lord. And he dove overboard, leaving the rest of the folks to, to get his, row his boat to shore and pull in the catch. There's a lot to question about Peter at this stage, but one thing we can't question is how much he loved Jesus. I mean, he loved Jesus. He wanted to be there. He dove in to swim ashore. And there, when he got there, he found Jesus cooking some fish on a charcoal fire. Now, we might be tempted to ask, well, where did Jesus get the fish? Did he, did he just create the fish? Maybe. I don't know. One thing we do know, we don't know where the fish came from, but one thing we do know is, is that this is the second time in the Gospel of John that we've seen a campfire with, with the disciples. The last time we saw it, Peter was there in the courtyard when he denied Jesus. And here he is again, no roosters crowing, but this time we see Peter with Jesus. The first time we saw Peter with Jesus was another fishing trip. It was in uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5. It records it. Jesus, that's when Jesus called Peter to come and follow him. Jesus sees him fishing and tells him, hey, cast your nets on the other side of the boat and you'll catch fish. And sure enough, he catches a record catch, just like he did just a few moments ago. And Peter's response back then, this is what's important, because his response back then is different than it was just now. Back then, Peter's response was, get away from me, Lord. For I'm a sinful man. See, back then when he got close to Jesus, all he wanted to do was get away he, because he saw his inadequacy as a fisherman. He saw his sinfulness as a man. And that's 
what a faithless response to mistakes is. When, I'm, when, when we get near to Jesus and we don't have faith, then we're left to, oh, okay, I've got to get away from him. I, I can't get near him. Because it reveals, when we see him, we see our inadequacy. It's when we don't understand grace. Because before you know Jesus' love, you're, you're, you're afraid to get near him. You don't want to come to church. You don't want to be around other Christians. I mean, that's the way I was. Because in God's presence, I was reminded of my sinfulness. And this is right where Satan wants to keep us. Right where Satan wants to keep us. He can keep, if he can keep us ashamed of our sin, in, in our yesterdays, like Adam and Eve, the way they cover up their, they try to cover it up and hide. If Satan can keep us there, running, hiding, covering up, living in denial, and death wins. Death wins when we live that way. But Jesus, he wouldn't leave Peter alone. God wouldn't leave Adam and Eve alone. And he won't leave us alone today either. Peter has seen, he's heard, he's been obedient, he loves Jesus. But he makes a mistake. He makes a mistake. And when he does, he does something that you and I are probably apt to do. He returns to his old ways. But, but even in his returning to his old ways, his faith is very different now. Still, he has some growing to do. And I say that because of what he does next in the text that, that uh, Miles read just a moment ago. Jesus shows up while Peter and the others are fishing. He shows his sovereignty over Peter's lifestyle, fishing, by pointing to him to the fish, and they haul in a record catch. And just then, Jesus invites Peter to bring some of his catch. But Peter doesn't bring just a few fish. He brings all uh, 153 of the fish to shore. And this just shows us that his faith was still immature, that he still had some growing to do. This week I did a little digging and I, to, to find out why that number 153 was in the Bible, like, like what was in here. What was so significant about 153 fish? And you know what I found out? I found out that 153 fish is exactly the amount of a whole bunch of fish. I mean, that's, just, that's, that's it, really. There's nothing significant about the number. The only thing that makes it significant is, is Peter brought them all. Peter brought them all as though he were trying to, to show Jesus to give back to Jesus everything, giving him more than what he had asked. He would said, come and bring some of your fish, and Peter brings them all. He had messed up. He'd had time to think about what he had done, probably hoping for another chance. And now when Jesus shows up, he's got that chance, and he's not going to mess up. He's going to bring it all. Have you ever been guilty of trying to win God's approval, trying to earn his favor? I think we all have at some point or another. Maybe this Lent. Maybe, like me, you, you try to take on some, some new spiritual disciplines, right? Whether reading the Bible or, or praying or, or something else, like studying a, a book or something. I don't know. But, but if you're like me, when, when we do that and we, we do it over and over and over again, if we're not careful, we start feeling like we have to. Like, like, like when I do that, God is happy with me. God approves of me. Trying to earn or deserve God's love will keep you busy. It'll keep you stressed. It'll keep you in bondage, actually. Because let's, let's just think about it. What could you possibly do to deserve perfect love? I mean, I love my wife. My wife loves me. She loves me, I mean, not perfectly, but pretty close. And there is nothing I could do to get her to love me like that. But she does that on her own. So if I can't earn her love... How could I possibly, which isn't perfect, how could I possibly earn God's love, which is? I couldn't. And that's where our enemy steps in to tempt us. See, he, he knows that we can't earn God's love, but he can convince us that if we can just be worthy, if we can just be worthy of God's grace, that becomes our mission, you see. We start feeling that we have to do this or we have to do that in order to win God's approval. And we fall back into this works-based salvation as though we can actually earn our own salvation. And whenever we, we start to feel like, like, like I'm actually, I am doing enough, whenever, I start to, whenever you start to feel that way, 
That should be a reminder to us that we need to go back to the cross, that we have some growing to do. Because God's love isn't something that I can earn. It's giving. It's given to you. It's given to me. Paul said it this way in Romans 5, 8. He said, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's what Easter is all about. You can't earn his love. You can't win his approval. And we see that in the story today. You see, notice what happened when Peter came to have breakfast. Jesus didn't need his fish. He already had the fish on the, sto- on the fire cooking. He wanted Peter's, he just wanted Peter to take part in what he was doing. He didn't need Peter. But Peter, the one who always goes first, the always, one who always goes over and above, right, does it again, only to realize that Jesus already had enough for him, for all of them. That's grace. That's the love of God that goes before us, right, that God provides before we have a need. And that's what Peter was beginning to realize right here at the fire, at a fire just like the one where he had denied Jesus and that rooster had crowed. Right here around this fire after breakfast is where Jesus drove this point home. In verse 15, where he says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Now there's some um, disagreement about what that these meant, but I'll get to that in just a second. But Jesus asks basically the same question three times. And each time Peter responds, yes, Lord. I love you. And then Jesus would respond back to him. Then feed my lambs. Then feed my my flock. Then take care of my sheep. But in this this first time he asks, what is this these that Jesus is talking about? People disagree. Uh, There's three different ways you can look at it. One, it may be that, do you love me more than these other disciples love me? He could have been asking Peter. Or he could have been asking Peter, Peter, do you love me more than you love these other disciples? Could have been. Or the third option, which I believe is the one that is most appropriate to the the way the story lays, lays out here, is, Peter, do you love me more than these fish? Do you love me more than these fish that you caught or that I gave you? I think that's what Jesus is asking. Because that's what Peter ran back to, right? When he was hurting, when he had messed up, when he made a mistake, he ran back to the thing, not not to the one who could actually heal him, but he ran back to the thing that he thought would bring him comfort. To help him forget about his pain of his yesterday. Do you love me more than these fish? These fish that you thought would bring fulfillment to your life that you couldn't even provide for yourself without me, Jesus says. And Peter says, yes. And again and again, Jesus says, do you love me? Three times he asked a man who denied him three times. And three times the man who denied Jesus has to proclaim, I love you, I love you, I love you. It had an impact on Peter. Peter is being restored. Can you feel it? I love you. I love you. I love you. Can you feel it? It's heavy. This is a this is a sacred moment for Peter. You see, when you think you messed up so bad, when your past is so dark, when your yesterday is so painful, you don't think there's any point. You have such a reputation that God could never use you. Just then, Jesus steps in and says, Come, follow me. Follow me. Henry Blackaby, in his famous book, uh, Experiencing God, he, he wrote this, The truth is that God can do anything he pleases through an ordinary person who's fully dedicated to him. Follow me. We see this every day in our churches. People tutoring. People helping distribute food to those who are hungry. People who are financially helping their neighbors, people who are feeding families week in and week out, a regular group of people, all of us with a past, but all being used today because 
we heard him say, follow me, and we followed. Jesus says, Peter, don't worry about yesterday. Heather, Ed, don't, don't focus on yesterday. Follow me today. Debbie, Mike, follow me today. Follow me. Don't fall into temptation of running from God when you make a mistake because he loves you. Don't make the mistake of, 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 of trying to earn his love because it's freely given. You don't have to earn it. Just receive it and trust that you've gotten it. If that's you, if you've, if you've made mistakes and you want another chance, a second, third, fifth, however many chances you need, God wants to offer that to you and he wants you to respond by loving him and if that's you if, if you would like to respond to God's call to follow him today I want to pray for you let's pray God I thank you for those who are who are worshiping with us today Lord who are hearing you call them to come and follow him to, to leave their yesterdays to leave their pain from the past to leave their mistakes behind and follow you today Lord I thank you that you never give up on us thank you that you never quit calling us drawing us to yourself and when you draw us close lord you never stop working to renew our heart equipping us to live a new life I thank you lord i thank you for those who are giving their life to you today god i ask you lord that you'd equip them you'd make them strong for the journey that you'd surround them with a, a supportive group of folk who are going to Show them how to live this life, God, who are going to teach them from their own mistakes. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this world, in this community, through these people. We love you, God. Amen. So if you prayed a prayer of surrender like that, or you know, today, if, then if today is the day that you gave yourself to Jesus, I, I, just want to, I just want to ask you to click on that button below me here that says, yes, I, did, I decided to follow Jesus. Uh, I want to be able to encourage you. So if you could just provide some contact information, I just want to get word out to you, a way you can grow in your faith that, to help you uh, get closer to Jesus as you grow. Now that you've made this decision, you've taken this step, I want to help you. Part of that may be in baptism. Maybe like you need to be baptized. I would love to help you with that this spring, soon, all right? Uh, to, to have you part of the family of God, to follow, you, to follow him into baptism. Please reach out to me and let me know that. The, there are other people who are watching here today who, who surrendered their life to him a while back, and they've been following. And they're like Peter. They're, they're back on track, right? They're, that's what we feel like. Peter, is, he, he's been restored. He's been renewed. He's been set back on track. He's going to follow Jesus again. We feel like we can kind of take a deep breath. We can, ah, we can take a, let, a, let out some air, right? But just then, just then, when it seems like everything is going right, look what Peter does in verse 21 if you have it there in your Bible. Lord, what about him? What about him? After all that Peter has gone through, after all that he's experienced here with Jesus, he's still thinking of others. He's still comparing himself to others. He says, what about John? Do you ever fall into this as a Christian? As I'm talking to you who are disciples, who are followers of Jesus. Do you ever look at others and compare your faith to theirs? Do you ever, do you ever think, boy, I, I, I wish I could pray like them, or I wish I could do what they do, or why is God, why am I so sick and they're so healthy? Why, why is my business struggling so much? When, when other businesses with uh, Christian owners, man, they are blessed. Why is mine struggling? This, just, this passage of Peter, when we, we look to compare ourselves to others, we do it too. We, we all do it. This reminds us that no matter how on track we are, we can always make a mistake. We can always get off track. I mean, Peter has just had this experience with Jesus, and immediately he steps off. Immediately. When we mess up, the last thing that Jesus wants you to do is to run and hide. The last thing he wants you to do is compare yourself to someone else, your mistake to their mistake. The last thing he wants you to do is run and hide. 
What he wants you to do is follow him. Follow him. Even if you have to follow him with a limp. So I want to encourage you that if you're a follower of Jesus, then, then I want to encourage you, no matter what, no matter what, get close to him. He loves you and he invites you to come and be with him, to leave yesterday behind, to live for right now, today, to love his people, to serve one another, to love one another, just as he wanted us to love. To don't worry about what was, don't worry about your yesterdays, live for what it is. And don't even worry about tomorrow, because he's, he promises to take care of that too. Disciples, follow him. Get close to him. Let him heal you. Let him make it all new. Live for today. Get out of yesterday. I'd like to pray for you as well. God, I thank you for those who are watching this today, who are faithful to you, Lord, who, who look to be used by you, Father. I thank you, God, that, that you have changed the lives of so many who are watching this, God, and I know they're thankful as well. Lord, we make mistakes. Even those who love you dearly, we make mistakes. We're not perfect. We're, we're moving on to perfection, but we are not there yet. God, when we do, remind us to follow you in spite of our mistakes, that we would stay close to you. Because that is where restoration happens. That's where the healing is, is near you. We love you, God. Thank you for changing our life. Thank you for using us for something significant here in our community, here in our world. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Amen. 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 Thank you for watching today. I want to close with our benediction as we send each other into the world. Hey, and don't forget that, that we are in the world for a purpose and a reason, right? Join me. Life is much more than an accident. Wherever I go, I believe God needs me there. Wherever I am, I trust that God has put me there, that he has a purpose for me being there. Christ, alive in me, wants to do something through me, no matter where I am. I believe this, and I go in his grace, in his love, and his power. Amen? God bless you all. Have a great day, a great week, and we hope to see you very soon.